Now we look at number eight in our series on managing for the master till he comes. This is entitled planning for success. And I don't know about you, but sometimes that does sound a bit like some self-help book of this is what you should be doing and this is how you're going to advance yourself. But I want to think of it in spiritual terms as we look at some of these ideas of how we think ahead, especially in terms of our spiritual growth in our own Christian life. Abraham Lincoln did have it right generally, however, when he said, give me six hours to chop down a tree and I will spend the first four sharpening the axe. A great example of preparation, of planning for the future, making sure that you have the right tools to do the job before you even start. So there's something to think about. And how would we relate that to our experience? Well, that says that you should spend time studying the Bible, knowing what God is saying to you. Spend time in prayer. Make sure that you uh, interact with other Christians, learn from them, and to develop most of all your relationship with God, your Father. <clears throat> then there's a, this line from Yogi Berra, which is absolutely true in everything in life, whether it's spiritual or otherwise. If you don't know where you're going, you'll end up someplace else. If you don't know where you're going, you'll end up someplace else. So absolutely true. And then Richard Cushing, always plan ahead. It wasn't raining when Noah built the ark. And as we think of the biblical material that we're given, we're told to remember God while we're young in Ecclesiastes. Adam was given a job there in the Garden of Eden. It wasn't simply here, have a wonderful time in this place that's like paradise. No, he is given a job there in Genesis 2.15 of taking care of the garden. We're told to look after our families in First Timothy and then to do whatever we're doing really well, it says in Colossians 3, 23 and 24. As if you're doing it for God and not for people because you know that the Lord will give you your reward and inheritance. You are serving Christ the Lord. And as we think about that, that should make us really think about our responsibility, not just to ourselves in our own development, but to others around us, our family, our friends, our Christian brothers and sisters, our neighbors, everybody that we interact with, people at work and so on. How are we serving Christ the Lord in all those responsibilities? Remember there in Genesis 39, how Potiphar was so impressed with Joseph's skills that he put Joseph in charge of his whole household, everything. This Hebrew slave was given a responsibility over the whole of Potiphar's household to manage it, to organize things, to pay the bills. He was so trusted that uh, he wasn't going to exploit things for himself. Potiphar gave him all that responsibility. And then lastly, uh, let's think about Proverbs 3, 5 to 8. Put your trust totally in the Lord. Don't rely on what you think you know. Remember him in everything you do, and he'll show you the right way. Don't think you're wise. Respect God and avoid evil. Then you'll be healed and made strong. What a wonderful recipe that is for life. Remembering God so that he will show you the right way. And don't rely on your own thinking don't think that you're so wonderfully wise trust in what God is saying and uh, he will help you to avoid evil and do what is good and then that last line you'll be healed and made strong you see the problem with sin is not that we are in legal trouble with God is that we are dying we have this fatal disease as it were of sin and if we don't come to the Lord for healing, he can't do anything for us. So let's remember that. Let's come to God. Let's remember to plan for success by putting ourselves in God's hands. So like a trustworthy physician, he can heal us 
as we put our trust in him.